Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a whiteboard. So let me show you what we're going to make today so you get a little idea for what we're doing and then we'll jump into the tutorial. Here's my little classroom scene that I have set up for us. This is just an asset pack that I downloaded from the interwebs. You'll see I have created a little marker here and it is what we're gonna use to draw on this whiteboard. So you can color the tip of this marker and whatever color you make it, that's the color that your marker will actually draw on the whiteboard and you can adjust the size of the marker as well. And so, as you can see, you can just draw whatever. So, VR. And my frame rate's a little sketchy just because I have a lot of applications open on my computer right now. But ideally, yours should be fine. There we go. A VR whiteboard. We're gonna start completely from scratch. So I'm gonna open up a new project. This is gonna be 2021.1.20 is the version I'm using. Any version 2020.3 and above should work the same. I'm just gonna go with normal 3D. This is gonna be a whiteboard tutorial. We've loaded our default 3D scene. I'm actually gonna set up VR at the end of this video just to show you how I usually test things because VR, it's a little bit of a hassle to actually test things. So we're going to do this just from what we have here and then we're gonna add a VR in afterwards after we have already done all the coding and whatnot. I will show you how to do every single line of code in this video and show you how to do everything, but if you can't seem to get it to work or if you don't feel like writing in all the code, my Patreon is linked below and you can download the project straight from there. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're gonna need two things. One is a whiteboard. So we're gonna do a just a normal plane. Um, this one can actually be the ground. And then we're gonna create a capsule just so that we have a player reference. It's gonna be a player size reference and I'm gonna bring that up. So capsule is two meters, so this would be a six foot tall person just so we can kind of reference how big we want to make things. And then I'm gonna make a, another plane and this one is gonna be our whiteboard. So I'm gonna reset the whiteboard down and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, move it backwards a tad, and the center point up a tad, and then we're actually gonna scale this down to something like 0.1, and let's say 0.3, or the, uh, the y-axis can stay one because it's gonna be a one thickness, and then 0.3 can be the actual size. There we go. So a, a decent little size whiteboard here, and this is what we're actually gonna write on. And it's important that it's a plane because the method that we're gonna do actually will draw on all sides of the texture. So we only want one side of texture visible for this style of uh, whiteboarding. And then we also need a marker. So we're gonna create a cube 3D object. Uh, well, first we're gonna create a empty object. This is gonna be called marker. And then we're gonna make sure this is centered, make sure the cube is centered, and then drag the cube into the marker. Um, the cube can actually be labeled like handle or something like that. And we're gonna make sure to grab the marker object and then drag and drop it next to our player so we can get a size reference. And then the handle can be something like 0.1 by 0.3 by 0.1. Could likely even go smaller than that and do something like 0 0.05 by 0.3 by 0 0.05. There we go. So this is gonna be the handle of our marker. And then we want to just duplicate that. So I'm gonna click on handle and press control D and then rename this to the tip. And then drag and drop that up. Resize the Y axis to like 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.05. And then if I want to link it directly to the top of the handle, I'm gonna hold down the V key, V is in Victor, and that will let me snap to, you'll see there's, there's a little box, so it lets me snap to a vertice, and that will snap the tip to the actual handle part of the marker. And then one more thing I wanna add in is just a grab point, so I'm gonna create a new empty object and say grab point is its name, and then we're just gonna manipulate the grab point so that the x-axis is pointing 
forwards or up rather. Um, and you can kind of angle this a little bit as well. So your pen when you're holding it is at a little bit of an angle like you would normally when you're writing. I'm just gonna do it straight vertical because that's uh, the easiest way to kind of get started. You can always manipulate this a little bit later. And then I'm gonna drag and drop the grab point a little higher as well. So like a normal normal pencil. So like when you, or a pen, when you hold a pen, it, you're grabbing it at this point right here. And it's usually off at a little bit of an angle. So this is where you would kind of manipulate that. And then the tip, we want to be able to color. So inside of our assets folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called whiteboard. And I'm just gonna throw all of the material scripts, prefabs into this folder. And this is actually for y'all, so you can download it later if you like from the Patreon link. So we're gonna create a, another folder. This is gonna be a materials folder. And then let's create a material inside of here. And this is just gonna be, let's say, marker blue. And then make that a uh, kind of blue color. And then just drag and drop the material onto the tip here. There we go. And you can kind of design this a little more if you want, make the, uh, felt part a little smaller, make it look more like a uh, marker, turn this into a cylinder or something. Um, but in this case, we're just doing really simple stuff just to kind of show you how it works. You can get creative with it in your, uh, your own time. All right, we can actually delete our player stand in now. And then I'm gonna take our marker and move it so it's right in front of the whiteboard. When we start testing, we can just use the scene mode and kind of drag and drop it along the whiteboard. So we're gonna need two scripts and the first one is pretty simple. So we're gonna start with that one. So I'm gonna create a scripts folder and then let's create a whiteboard script. So new C sharp script, whiteboard. And then double click to open it. I'm using JetBrains Writer, which is my favorite IDE but it is a paid IDE, so everything that I do in here will also work in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. Um, it should all work the same. If something's not working for you, just make sure you have the same using statements I have up here at the top. I'll try to kind of say what I'm adding or removing or whatnot. So we don't need this update method, so I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm just gonna delete this comment as well. We're first gonna wanna access the texture of this whiteboard so that we can manipulate it. So I'm going to say public, Texture 2D, and then we're just gonna call it texture. And then we want the resolution. So this is actually gonna be the texture size. This is gonna be public vector two, and we're gonna call it texture size. And we're actually gonna go ahead and set that as well, just so it is pre-existing and a designer can come in later and manipulate the size. So this is gonna be a new vector two, and this is gonna be a 2048 by 2048 to start out with. And then this will be the equivalent of one or 0 0.1 or something like that. Um, so you can you know, kind of scale the resolution as the actual size of the whiteboard changes. And then the start method, we're gonna need to get the renderer. So var r is gonna be, oh, spelled that wrong, var r is gonna be equal to get component renderer. And then from the renderer, we can grab the texture. We're gonna create a new 2D texture and then we're gonna set this as the main texture of the renderer. So let's do a new texture 2D and we're gonna set this to int texture size dot x and then int texture size dot y. We're gonna set that to the r dot material dot main texture. And that's all we need for the whiteboard script. So just set it, getting the resolution and setting that as a new texture so that we can now manipulate it. And then just make sure that you add your script onto the whiteboard. And then we're actually going to tag whiteboard as whiteboard, just create a new whiteboard tag, just so that we can access this later and do some, you know, do a little bit more elegant kind of a debugging and whatnot. So we're gonna tag this as whiteboard. Now, let's create a whiteboard marker script. So new C sharp script, whiteboard marker. Open that one up. And this is where the meat and potatoes is. So first thing we need to do is get access to the tip. And then we also want to set a pen size and this can be adjusted later. So if you wanna have a slider or something, that will you know make the marker bigger or smaller when you're drawing, then you can use this variable 
for that. So these are gonna be two serialized fields. First one's gonna be the transform of the tip. And the second one, also serialized field, is going to be just an integer of pin size. And we're gonna set that to five to start out with. And then in order to get the material color, we need access to the renderer. So we're gonna say private renderer, renderer. And then from here, we can grab that renderer from get component, and that's gonna give us access to the color. And right now, when we are coloring in a you know, splotch of, so like, let's say I just dotted the whiteboard. We want to color in a decent amount of pixels. So right now we're just gonna be coloring in squares because that's the easiest kind of algorithm to run. So we're gonna be coloring in a five by five square of pixels in this case. We need a 25 length uh, color array. So we just need 25 colors of whatever the render color is. So all 25 pixels in that little square that we make need to be the same color. So we just need to create an array of, you know, the render color. So to do that, we're going to create a color array. So private color, this is just going to be colors. Colors is going to be equal to enumerable. And we're going to repeat and basically this is just, you know, taking one value and repeating it over, you know, however large we want it to be. The value we want is the renderer.material.color. And then how many times we want is just pen size times pen size. And we're gonna set this equal to an array. So if you wanted to do a circle or some other shape of the pen, you would want to calculate how many pixels you actually needed to change for that particular circle or whatever. So that'd be a little bit harder of a calculation, but um, we're gonna stick with super easy geometry of just length times width in this case. And then one more thing we need to do in the start method is to get the length of the tip. And we're gonna use this for a raycast to see if we're actually touching the whiteboard or not. So we're gonna create a new private variable. It's gonna be a float and we're just gonna call it tip height. And then I'll just get set with tip height is gonna be equal to the tip dot local scale dot y. And that's all of our setup. And then we want to every frame check and say, are we touching a whiteboard? If we're touching a whiteboard, we wanna check and see what the resolution is and um, do some of that. And then we're going to change the texture of that whiteboard in the particular spot we're touching. Um, and then we also wanna do a little bit of interpolation. So just in case we're moving the pin really fast, it doesn't just like give us some dots, it actually streaks correctly and gives us an actual line. So a few, a few different things, we're gonna kind of dive into that. And we're gonna do this all in a separate method. I like to keep my update methods quite um, simple. So we're just gonna say draw and create a new method. So every frame we're gonna call this draw method. It's gonna be a private void draw. First thing we wanna do is check and see if we're touching anything. So we need to do a raycast. We're gonna do this inside of an if statement. Physics, raycast. We're gonna start at the tips position. So tip.position. We want to be going up because the, the way the marker is oriented, the Y direction is up. Um, so that's the direction the raycast needs to be going. So we're just gonna say transform.up because we are currently inside of the marker object. So it's transform we can use. We want to get out a variable of touch and this is gonna be a raycast hit. Let's create a new private raycast hit variable. And we want to raycast the length of the tip height that we calculated earlier. So if we actually hit something within these parameters, starting from the position going up and a length of the tip height, then we're gonna jump into here and then we will get out this touch raycast hit variable. And inside of here, we wanna see, does that touch object actually have the tag of whiteboard? So if we're touching the table, we don't actually wanna mark on the table and this will allow us to mark on specific things. So inside of here, we're gonna do another if statement. I'm gonna say if the touch.transform.compare tag is whiteboard, then we can continue on and uh, do some more things. The first thing we we'll wanna do is cache that whiteboard script that we made earlier. So we're gonna say if, and we're gonna create a new variable for whiteboard. So if whiteboard, is null, then we're gonna say whiteboard is equal to touch.transform.getComponent. 
whiteboard. So every, everything with the tag of whiteboard should also have the script of whiteboard, which will be convenient for us. So we're gonna create a new private variable, whiteboard. And to checking to see if it is set or not will allow us to only do it that first time you touch and not every other frame afterwards because that kind of creates a little bit of a draw on the uh, processing. So we only wanna do this the first time and not every iteration afterwards while you're creating the line. Next, we wanna grab the touch position that we uh, touch the whiteboard on. So we're gonna create a new variable called touch pause, and that's gonna be equal to a new vector two, which has the touch dot texture coordinate dot X and touch dot texture coordinate dot Y. And let's create that touch two variable, touch pause. Now we're gonna do a little math to calculate where on the actual whiteboard that we're touching in relation to the resolution that we set up earlier. So that 2048 resolution that we have by default, this is where in that 2048 pixels are we actually touching. So we're kind of doing a little math to translate from the actual touch position in Unity in X and Y to a pixel. So we're transferring it from a float number to a pixel number of what pixel inside of the actual screen or resolution we are actually touching. So we're gonna say var x is gonna be equal to um, a forced int value of touch pause dot x, multiply that by the whiteboard dot texture size dot x, and then we're gonna subtract the pen size divided by two. So we want the uh, Basically we want to account for, just in case the uh, pin kind of overwrites, writes outside of the texture, we're only going up to that edge. And then I'm just gonna press Control D with my cursor on that line and then I'll duplicate it for us and we can change the X values to Y. And now we're gonna do a out of bounds check. So this just checks to make sure if you're dragging your pin and you drag it off of the whiteboard, then it's going to stop trying to draw the line anymore and we'll actually just exit the loop here. If we don't have this line that I'm about to write, it'll give us an error in Unity and Unity doesn't, doesn't like that. So we're gonna say if y is less than zero, and we don't need to account for the pin size anymore because we did that in the x and y pixel calculation. So if a y is less than zero, or if y is greater than the whiteboard dot texture size on the y axis, or same thing for x. So I'm just gonna highlight all of this, press control D again, that'll duplicate it for us, add another or statement in there, and then change all these y's to x's. And then at the end of that, I want to return. So this will just drop us out of this draw method if we are actually out of bounds. So if y ends up being a negative one or something, then you know, we know we're not on the whiteboard anymore. So let's just leave and not try to draw anymore. Now we can actually start drawing. So after all of these calculations and checks and whatnot, we can actually start drawing. So we're gonna say, if we have touched the last frame, which is gonna be a new bool variable that we have, Go up to the top and create that private bool touch last frame. Then we actually want to draw. So we're gonna say the whiteboard dot texture dot set pixels, and we want it to be on the x and y coordinate, and the block width is gonna be pen size, and block height is also gonna be pen size, and the color is gonna be that colors array that we made um, earlier. So this sets the point that we actually touch. But then we also kind of want to interpolate and say, okay, well, you know, between last frame and this frame, we also want to color in all those points if we were still touching and didn't pick up the pen. <laughs> the easy part is coloring in every spot that we touch. The hard part is kind of interpolating that and creating a, a nice line. So to do that, we need a for loop. And here you can kind of set how many iterations. So this is going to be like a, basically a percentage value. So how, how much percent coverage do you want? So we can set, um, so we're gonna have a float. So this is gonna be a, not an int, but a float of f. f is gonna be equal to 0 0.01. I'm gonna say if f is less than 1.00, then we're gonna go through the loop. And then instead of adding one every time, we're gonna add um, f is gonna be plus equals um, 0 0.01. So we have a float, we're starting at 0 0.01.01. 
to 1% and then we're going up to 100% and every frame or not every frame this is how it happens in one frame so be a be a little careful if you're kind of having a little latency you can increase this value to increase by three and now you're um, only having about 30 percent coverage in between instead of 100 percent coverage in between so inside of here we're just going to do a little interpolation so var lerp x going to be equal to a forced int of math f dot lerp last touched position, which we'll set later. So at the very end, we'll set last touch position and the X value of that. And then we want to interpolate between the last touch position and this current position. And we will basically fill that gap in. I'm gonna press Control D to duplicate that and change all the X's to Y's. And then I'm gonna copy this whiteboard texture set pixels, paste that down below here. And instead of X and Y, we want the lerp X and Y, and that will fill that in. So let's go back and create this last touch pause. It's gonna be a vector two as well. We can actually write it behind this touch pause. So last touch pause. Is it touch or touched? Forgot what I wrote. Yeah, last touch. So we're setting the original point that we touch, and then we're looping through either you know one of 100 or three of 100, depending on this number, to fill in the space between the last point we touched and the current point we touched. And then we're setting that pixel as, or set, setting that group of pixels as well. And then we also want to keep track of the last touched rotation. And we're going to set the last rotation to the current rotation. So basically what we're doing is preventing, so if I, in VR, if I am you know using physics to actually push my pin against this wall, in VR, you don't have any like kind of movement grip like this, so your pin will just kind of flop like that. And so we basically want to lock the rotation when we touch the whiteboard so your pin doesn't like use physics and just go flat against the whiteboard. So we're gonna lock the, you know, whatever rotation you hit, we're gonna lock it while you're touching. And then when we let go, we'll release that rotation again. Um, so basically it just prevents us from going like that when you push into the whiteboard because you don't have that tactile like response of touching the uh, whiteboard. So to do that, we just do transform.rotation is gonna be equals to the last touch. We'll just do last touch rot rotation. And this is gonna be a quaternion. So private quaternion is gonna be equal is last touch rot. And then after all that, we want to apply. So we'll do whiteboard, dot texture dot apply and that will set all of these pixels that we changed and actually update the texture and then outside of the last touch frame we want to actually set all of these values from the last frame so that we have access to them in the current frame so this is where we set the last touch position that's going to be equal to a new vector two of the x and y values we want to set the last touch rotation it's gonna be equal to the transform.rotation. And then we wanna set last touch, or touch last frame equal to true. And then we're actually gonna return. So we're gonna end the method here because instead of writing if else, this if else do the same thing, we're just gonna add in at the very bottom here. So if you, you know, didn't go through the if statements, didn't successfully go through all of them and hit this return statement, then you'll end up getting all the way down to the bottom here. And this is where we're gonna unset the whiteboard. So whiteboard is gonna be equal to null. And then we're gonna unset the uh, touch last frame. That's gonna be equal to false. So if we, if our pin isn't actually touching anything and if that thing is not actually a whiteboard, then instead of ending up hitting this return statement, we'll come down and hit this line of code, which will unset the whiteboard and unset the uh, touch last frame so that we're not going through that over and over again. And this is all the code. So I'll go through it one more time just so you can kind of um, see it and uh, get any parts that you may have missed. So these are the variables that we have. Our start method where we get the renderer, set up the colors array and the tip height. In the update method, we're just calling this a draw method every frame. And then in the draw method, we are doing a physics raycast, checking for a whiteboard if the uh, item we're touching is a whiteboard. If we have cached the whiteboard object already, we're going to skip. Otherwise, we're gonna get component, and since get component like takes a, a little bit longer, we don't wanna be doing this every frame, so we have this little cache kind of if statement here. We're going to grab the touch position 
from our texture coordinates. We're going to convert that touch position to the uh, whiteboard's texture size, or so basically converting the touch position to the uh, specific X and Y pixels that we're touching. We're gonna say if those pixels are actually outside of the texture, we want to exit, and we don't want to continue to draw. And then we're gonna check and see, okay, if we touch the last frame, then we want to go ahead and color in some pixels. But if we didn't touch the last frame, we want to set the last frame items. And so the way this works is we don't actually ever color the first time we touch the screen, but the second frame we will have already touched and it's gonna interpolate that first spot to the next spot. So we actually do get all of those pixels colored in correctly. It's just essentially happening one, happening one frame late. So we are setting the initial point that we touched, the, the initial pixel or group of pixels, and then we are interpolating from the last point that we touched to the current. And then we are essentially locking the rotation so your pen doesn't snap up to uh, be in line with the whiteboard, which is really annoying. And then we are actually applying the coloration to the pixels. And then we're setting um, all the caching for the next frame so we have access to it. And then if we didn't go through all of those, then we're gonna uncache the whiteboard and set touch last frame equal to false. So I'm gonna save that, go back into Unity, and then the marker, we need to make sure that our whiteboard marker script is on the marker. It's on the, uh, the parent object. And then make sure you set the tip and set the pen size. Our whiteboard has the whiteboard script on it and is tagged with whiteboard. And then the texture size, so the um, X and Y axis, um, the, I think the Y axis in this particular case is the X axis. So you have to kind of play around with the texture size. Um, and so in this case, since our transform scale is one to three, so we're gonna say this 2048 is one and then this 2048, we're gonna multiply by three, hit enter, and that'll update our texture size for us. And so now we'll get a nice even square instead of kind of a oblong rectangle drawing shape. And now we haven't set up VR yet. We're gonna test it. So I'm gonna hit play, wait for that to go. We're gonna go back into scene view, and then I'm gonna grab the marker, make sure you're grabbing the, the uh, parent object of the marker. And, oh, so we missed uh, one thing, and I know we missed uh, one more thing. So there is no render attached to marker. We actually, instead of grabbing the, in the start method, when we grab this get component render, we actually want to get component of the tip, tip dot get component. And that'll get whatever the color the tip is. So that was, that was a mistake. Just add in tip dot to that. That'll fix that. And then, then I think we're good. One more thing that's worth noting though, is the, whatever object you are turning into the whiteboard. So if you do end up using a cube or something like that, make sure you have a mesh collider on it and not a box collider or a sphere collider or something like that. It has to be a mesh collider in order for this kind of texture um, drawing to work. So I'm gonna save all this again, hit play. We're gonna see if this one works. All right, no errors, that's good. Go back into our scene view, grab the marker, and we are drawing. And it is <laughs> quite small in comparison to the actual marker, so we could, um, let's up the pen size a little bit here. Oh, let's uh, pause it and then up the pen size. Let's let's go, let's do 15. See how that looks. So it's really just kind of getting the scale of the marker in line with whatever your uh, pen size is. So now now the pen size is a little bit, bit bigger. We could move the, uh, we could size down the marker a little bit if we wanted to. So. Now I'm, I'm getting close, and if you move very fast, you should, um, so you'll see this is our interpolation. So basically we had one point here and one point here, and it kind of interpolated and just made a whole bunch of little dots here. So if you wanted to increase that interpolation, you could you know, make it an even smaller increment, but that also kind of decreases your processing a little bit. So as long as it's a, a relatively smooth line, you should be fine. And just make sure that when you disconnect from the board and then reconnect, you don't have like a line that draws across and tries to connect to the, those two lines as well. So there we go. We have our, our little whiteboard and now we can set it up for VR and this will work for any kind of VR, um, whether you're using a 
toolkit that you imported from the asset store, which, you know, Hurricane, Auto Hand, all of those, those will all work with this. Also the, uh, you know, XR interaction system that we're, we're about to set up. I'll show you how to set that up with this particular case, just so you, you know, can have a full video of, it even includes, you know, how to set up the XR for this particular part. So if you already have set up XR, you can probably skip, um, you can probably end the video now because uh, I'm basically just going to add this to velocity tracking and uh, set up XR. So let's uh, let's set this up. And uh, just a reminder, the code is in my Patreon if you don't feel like writing all of it. I know it's a little confusing or if you end up running into some bugs, um, feel free to join the Patreon, which is also linked in the description. It is a uh, free resource and super helpful. We have a very active dev help channel and a lot of good admins. Um, and moderators who are really helpful and really knowledgeable about VR development. So join the Discord if you have not already. It's been a minute since I've shouted that out. So let's set up XR for this particular project. So we're going to want to go to Project Settings, scroll all the way down to XR Plugin Management, and install that. Once that's installed, we'll get a, a list of checkboxes here. We're going to check Open XR. That'll install some more things. It's going to ask us to restart Unity, and it's going to update the input system from the old input system to the new input system. So just hit yes, it'll restart Unity. There we go. Once Unity is restarted, you'll see this little exclamation point triangle. We want to fix the item that it lets you fix, and then click on edit. That'll take you to the OpenXR page. So from XR Plugin Management, OpenXR, and it wants you to add in at least one interaction profile. So I'm using Oculus Touch. And then I also use Valve Index, so I'll add both of those in there, because why not? And then we want to add in the Unity Preview Package. So we need to go up to Package Manager and click Enable Pre-Release Packages, and say I understand that these are in pre-release. And then go over to the Package Manager. Both Project Settings and Package Manager can be accessed from this window bar up here. Project Settings is Edit Project Settings, and Package Manager is Window package manager. And then inside package manager, we want to swap from in project packages to unity registry packages. Scroll all the way down to the XR interaction toolkit preview. Install that one. And there is a default input action sample that we want to download as well. So import that one as well. And that'll give us a samples folder with some default input actions. If we click on those, it gives us some presets that we can add so we want to add, let's do continuous move. We're gonna add the left controller, the right controller, and snap turn. So this basically presets up some input actions so we don't have to go through and do it manually. It's quite nice. Let's go back into our scene view now. Actually, one more thing before that, project settings and preset manager. And then now, so these are all the presets that we added by clicking on this button here at the top on the um, left and right hand controllers, we just need to add right and left to the appropriate filter for that particular input action. And this just helps further set up. That's the only thing you have to actually type in to help like, with the uh, setup. It's a little finicky and weird, but... So now we need to add in an XR rig into our system. So we can right click, go to XR, and XR rig action based. Click on that. That'll add in the XR rig. I'm going to reset it to the center. If you don't see the green box, make sure your gizmos is turned on. And then I can rotate that so the x-axis is pointing forward towards the um, whiteboard that we actually want to interact with. And then if you want to add in some movement, we're going to right click, go to XR and locomotion system. And then we're going to add in, we're going to remove the teleportation and add in snap. Well, snap turns already in there. We're going to add in continuous move, make sure it's action based. And then we want to set up, make sure the hands are correct. So for snap turn, we want to use the right hand to do snap turns. So I'm gonna uncheck the left hand. And then for continuous move, we wanna use the left hand thumbstick for that. So I'm gonna uncheck the right hand. And now that is all set up. We can drag and drop the XR rig. It'll automatically find it if you don't do that. That just helps me for peace of mind. And then, um, let's see, there's a few more things we need to add in. So the left hand controller, Make sure that all of these references are left hand and same for the right hand to make sure they're all right hand and you don't have one that has just left hand, like both of them have left hand interactions or something like that. That would mean that you didn't actually set up the filter if you didn't actually type in the filter. 
correctly. Um, there's one setting I always like to uncheck and that is anchor control on the left hand and right hand controllers. And that basically means while I'm using the thumbsticks, if I'm holding something, it's gonna move that something that I'm holding with the thumbstick. And I don't know why that's checked by default. It's super annoying, so I always uncheck it. And then if we want to be able to, you can also adjust the XR line visual here as well. And then we want to be able to grab the marker. So on the marker, I'm gonna add a component. We're gonna add a grab interactable. That's gonna automatically add a rigid body that you can adjust to use gravity and whatnot. And then inside of the XR grab interactable, we want to swap the movement type. Instantaneous will let us just go through the whiteboard as well as kinematic too, I believe. But if we do velocity tracking, it will actually connect with the whiteboard and the object, the marker won't actually go through the whiteboard. And that's why we set up the rotation freeze when you touch the whiteboard so your whiteboard, so your marker doesn't like snap to the uh, whiteboard when you press up against it. So now everything is set up. If you want to, you could create some prefabs. So we can create a prefabs folder inside of the uh, whiteboard folder. And then I can drag and drop my whiteboard in there and the marker in there. And now let me save this, make sure I'm in link mode and then hit play and we'll see what we have. There we go. So we have our whiteboard. Oh, one more thing I missed. I always forget this. On the XR interaction manager, Let's add in the input action manager component. And then we want to drag and drop this default input actions onto the action assets. I always forget this component. So you have to add this in in order for your controllers to actually move when you uh, are in the scene. So that was, that was the only thing I missed. Hit play again. And now, where's the marker? Uh oh, let's uh, uncheck use gravity for the marker so I don't lose it. So marker, rigid body uncheck use gravity um, and oh and then also we set up the grab point for the marker so inside of our grab interactable we can set that as well so under attach transform let's throw that grab point there there we go and then make sure to apply that to your prefab as well so it saves there hit play again and our marker shouldn't disappear on us there we go so grab the marker <laughs> it is quite large so now, when I go on the whiteboard, I can color correctly. Ta-da! And it doesn't use gravity, so bye-bye. Ooh, can I just like throw it and have it? Because <laughs> the position freezes, that. that's interesting. Anyway, well, there you go. That's how you set up a marker to use in VR to uh, set up a little whiteboard. I will probably do a eraser kind of video later and it's gonna be mostly the exact same, but we're just gonna reference the render color of the whiteboard and just use that as our drawing. So it'll basically just be drawing on whatever the original color of the whiteboard is back wherever the uh, eraser is. So that's, that's how you do an eraser if you want to set that up as well. And then to change the color of the marker, all you have to do is change the material because we're referencing the material. So that's pretty handy. So you can have multiple markers and multiple whiteboards and all that kind of stuff. So have fun. Um, I would love to hear from you in the comments if uh, this worked for you. Um, if it does not work for you, join the Discord and we can help you out in the Dev Help page. Um, and as always, uh, all the code is available on my Patreon, uh, the whole project and everything. If uh, you're really running into bugs or you don't want to type everything out um, and whatnot. So look forward to uh, seeing you again soon and uh, I'll see you in the next one.